Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and go over an introduction to light. So first of all, I do want to ask you, what do you think light is? What is light? Well, there's actually a lot to that question and the answer, but we're going to start with the basics and build up throughout this unit. We're in our unit of waves. Now we're talking about our subsection of light here. So aspects of light where light behaves as if it is a wave. And in most ways, light does behave like it's a wave, but occasionally it behaves as if it's a particle. So it's a really interesting phenomenon. Let's say that light is a type of electromagnetic wave radiation, and it behaves like a particle sometimes too. And we're going to be looking at the wave properties of light here in our waves unit. And since we're all familiar with color, I want to start with color. So hopefully you've seen a prism before. They can be very beautiful. They can break up white light into the different colors or spectrum of light, like a rainbow effect that you see over here. Very beautiful things. And there's a lot of physics going on there, too. All right, so let's talk a little more about color. First of all, color is our brain's interpretation of different frequencies of light or the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is crazy, but think about it for a moment. The only significant difference between red light and green light and blue light is their wavelength or their frequency, depending on how you think of it. So if you look over here, this blue color is going to have a shorter wavelength. That means it's going to have a higher frequency. And our brain's interpretation of that is what we call blue, which is amazing. We have blue light coming into the back of our eyes, and our brain interprets that as the blue color. All right, so let's go ahead and talk in a little more detail about this. So we know that most people have three different types of light-absorbing photoreceptor cells in their retinas, the back of their eyes, near the focal point where the light gets focused in the back of the eye. And so there are blue cone type cells, green cone cells, and red cone cells that have these structures in here that will absorb at different wavelengths or frequencies of light. Now, if you're colorblind, colorblindness is fascinating from a scientific perspective because people who are colorblind have one or more of these types of photoreceptors are either missing or just not working properly. And so as a result, they can't see the same colors that you and I can. But even then, these photoreceptors will absorb over a big swath of color, right? So it peaks in the blue. This one, this photoreceptor here peaks in the blue, you could say. This one peaks in the green, and this one peaks in the red, and there's overlap. And so our brain's interpretation, as our photoreceptors get stimulated, like it's mostly red, let's say, and very little blue, and that may put us over here at this end of the electromagnetic spectrum. And our brain is able to come up with a color dependent on the photoreceptors that are being stimulated and how greatly they're being stimulated. And when we talk about visible light, what we're talking about is a very, very small, far less than 1% of the what's called the electromagnetic spectrum so a much wider range of electromagnetic waves and I haven't defined yet what an electromagnetic wave is I will in just a moment but just know that there are many 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 colors you could say outside of the range that we can see some creatures can even see outside of our range of colors and so looking at these spectrum are set up in different ways left to right top to bottom and wavelength or frequency but in this case, we're talking about wavelength over here as being very short for things like gamma rays and x-rays. These have very short wavelengths and very high frequencies. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy they have. So x-rays and gamma rays can be very damaging to tissue, biological tissue. They can go straight through it and knock electrons off of atoms, causing chemical changes to happen, ionization to happen. That should not happen. And then down here, you have lower energy waves that have longer wavelengths and can pass right harmlessly through things. All right, and here is another way of looking at the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is a good depiction of it. If you take a look here, you could say your wavelength is going to decrease as you go from left to right, the way that it's shown over here. So we're getting from larger wavelengths to smaller, and you can tell by these pictures right here to help visualize what's happening. And you can go from radio waves all the way up to gamma rays over here. Visible light is just a very small part of that. And again, the frequency ramps up as you go from left to right, and the energy level ramps up as well as you go from left to right. As you get into x-rays and gamma rays, these things become more and more dangerous to living creatures. It's one of the reasons why, say, colonizing Mars would be so hard. It doesn't have an iron core to shield it from the harmful rays coming from the sun. Most creatures would be dead or dying from harmful rays from the sun within, say, three years of getting to the red planet. All right, and here's another biology connection. I just think this is fascinating. There are colors 
and patterns in flowers that we cannot even see. The colors on the flowers, they have not evolved for us. They've evolved for pollinators, right? And pollinators can actually see outside of our range. They can see in the ultraviolet. And so if you take pictures of the same flower with different lenses on these cameras or different cameras, the one on the left is a picture of a flower that's taken just with a normal camera. The one on the right has a UV filter on it or a UV sensitive camera that's able to take that picture. And you notice this really dark band here. It's put in a false color that we can see. That's not really what it looks like. We don't know what it really looks like but it's put into a false color here and this white false color right here, you can see the contrast and that's to help the pollinators find the nectar and the pollen, where they're going. So it helps them and it helps the flowering plant reproduce as well. Pretty amazing. All right, and up until now, I haven't really defined what an electromagnetic wave is and this is really important. An electromagnetic wave, first of all, it's a transverse wave it oscillates, that means it goes back and forth, and it's got two fields that are continually doing this, an electric field and a magnetic field, oscillating at right angles to each other. And we're gonna talk in a lot more detail about what we mean by an electric field and a magnetic field later in the course. So hold that thought. If your question is, what's an electric field? What's a magnetic field? We will get to that, I promise. Down below here, this image is also helpful to visualize what's going on, although the colors are switched. Okay, and so building on something we've done in the past, we could talk about the wave equation. So the wave equation that we've used in the past will come back here because here light is behaving like a wave. And so we can run problems using the wave equation. This is incredibly easy to do, and it's a very important equation. So just because it's easy doesn't mean it's not important. So the problem is saying that blue light photoreceptors absorb at this peak, green at this peak, and red at this peak in terms of the wavelengths. And there are a couple things you're going to need to know. First of all, you'll need to know the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters a second. And nano as a prefix means 10 to the negative ninths. So something measured in nanometers is very, very small. So if we were going to do this and solve for the frequency, well, let's go ahead and start to isolate for the frequency, right? And so we're going to isolate first. And for the blue light information, we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. We know the speed of the wave is this. The wavelength of the wave is given and we come up with our answer, and then we can do the same thing for green and the same thing for red. Notice once again that the frequency and the wavelength are inverse of each other. If one goes up, the other one goes down. So in this case, for instance, blue has the shortest wavelength of the three, but then it would have the highest frequency. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, and there's a lot more I could say about color, but to keep this lesson short, I'm not going to go on to additive and subtractive colors for now, although I may do a lesson on this later and I may throw up a link to a simulation so you can go ahead and start learning about these because there are some great simulations out there these days that help you to understand the difference between these things. In any case, we're going to be talking more about light in this unit of vibrations and waves. Hopefully this has been helpful and hope you have a great day. Take care.